Let's face it, if keeping our homes organized were easy, all of our homes would be clutter free. And wouldn't most of us rather be catching up on our favorite TV series rather than spending time organizing? Thankfully, our next guest has tips to help clear out the clutter and the chaos. Lisa Soma is a professional organizer and owner of Organizing by Lisa. She's here to help us declutter our homes in less time to make your home a more soothing and less stressful space. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. So Lisa, why do you think it is so easy to pack on that clutter in our homes? You know, we're such a mobile society that we're out all the time. We're constantly stopping at the store, stopping at a garage sale, whatever it may be. Kids are going to birthday parties and coming home with little trinkets all the time. And everything just gets brought in and laid out all over the house. And we do have some tips, but before we get into those, when do you think it's time to maybe let go of some of the clutter that we have? Right, I think a good um, go through about every six months is a good time, especially if you have little ones because they're outgrowing their things about every six months. So that's a good habit to get into. And then later in life, you can still do that kind of a, a purge. Of course, in the kitchen, it might be more often. The refrigerator, of course, is once maybe every couple weeks going through and checking that stuff. So it just depends on when things are expiring. And that junk drawer just seems to get things in there all the time. Yep, everything gets thrown in the junk drawer. But one way to tame the junk drawer is through um, some of these products here. And this is one thing that I find a lot of homes are missing in their junk drawers and in their bathroom drawers too. I mean, these work awesome lots of places. But get those drawer dividers in place. You can um, make them fit whatever drawer you have. And they, they're so nice. They keep everything so organized. Of course, you still have to clean it out every once right. in a while, but it really helps to keep things divided and separated. Right, and speaking of drawer dividers, kitchen tips to help us keep our kitchen organized. You have some of yes. those. Yes, absolutely. Keep things at eye level. So your dishes, your glasses, your bowls, those things you're using every day, keep those on the first shelf and, and by the dishwasher so that as you're unloading, you can easily put things away. Um, keep utensils in a crock by the stove. The ones you're kind of using regularly, that's a great place for those. The ones that you're maybe only using or during holidays or when you're doing a lot of cooking, those can be down in a drawer uh, down below where you can get at them when you need them. Mm -hmm. um, everyday appliances. For a lot of people, it might be the Keurig or a coffee maker, um, a toaster. Those can be on the counter. Otherwise, store those underneath in a cupboard or the pantry. Um, and then use those junk drawer dividers. Those work awesome. And you mentioned storing some of these bigger utensils. I was t telling you that we have a very small one, and now that we have this many items, it tends to tip over. So do you think we should be storing some of these items maybe below that we don't use as much? Yes, you could definitely do that. If you find, though, that you're using all of those that you have, get a, a, a crock or something with a wider base okay. so that it's not tipping over on you. And kids' rooms, these yes. can be especially hard because kids don't always like to pick up their toys, and either do we, let's be honest. Right. So what are some right. tips you have for keeping the kids' room organized? Number one is train and teach those kids to pick up after themselves. I know when I was growing up, if my sister and I were playing a game of Candyland, my mom was adamant that that game get put away before we get out the game of Connect Four, for instance, or whatever it is. So pick up as they go. Um, keep things separated into totes or tubs. Implement a toy, toy rotation system. Those are awesome because kids don't need every single toy out at the same time. Right. Um, rotate those toys and keep them um, happy with new, new toys coming out um, every month or so. Um, keep a small box in their closet for outgrown items. You can do that in your own closet as well. Just a, a small tote or a small box to throw in those things that don't fit anymore that you know you'll never wear again. Just toss them in there instead of putting them in back in in your closet or dresser drawers. And then use shelving and hooks that the kids can reach because that way they can help themselves. Right. And how often should we be maybe getting rid of some of those items they no longer play with? And once the once it's completely full, <laughs> right, right. And and an another time is like a six month rotation is kind of okay. going through that, um, or maybe at birthday time or after Christmas or before Christmas. And maybe even getting... seasonal. Yeah, seasonal works too. Okay. So yep, yep. You can kind of gauge what it is that they're kind of outgrowing throughout that season and mm -hmm. let that go. 
Great. And then also the bathroom and linen closet yes, area. Yes, yes. Those can get really full of products. Um, if you're one that tends to bring home these little samples from the hotel mm. and, then, <laughs> and then just not use them but keep right. them forever and then 10 years from now you're going to say, I think I can donate these somewhere. Maybe somebody doesn't want to use those products that are 10 years old. So if, if you're bringing them home and collecting them to give somewhere, give them out um, within a year. Otherwise, take them home and actually use them. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to use them, leave them where you found them. You have some different kind of linen closet yep. tips here as yep. well. What do you mean by store sets inside of one of your pillowcases? Right. So when you're... I think two, sheet, two sets of sheets per bed is plenty. Um, if you're like me and you hate to fold sheets, I actually only use one continuously, wash it and put it right back on. But fold up those sheets and then use one of the pillowcases to put that sheet set in. They will stack better in the closet. Um, and that way it's all together and they don't get um, mixed up and you don't have different sheet sets um, with different sizes and you don't know which bed they go on. So right. that's a good way um, to go about that. And then another thing I recommend is having two towels per person in the household. Um, that way it's forcing you to do your laundry a little bit more frequently and keeping up with that laundry is a really good way to stay organized as well. Right, and like you mentioned, everything is just all ready to go. So you're saving time because everything's in here. Right, everything's right there ready to go. And the bathroom as well, are there different organization Little the drawer dividers work awesome in bathrooms too for your makeups, for your brushes, for even for little girl uh, hair products, barrettes, uh, stuff like that. So. And one point you had on there is always be checking expiration dates, which is something yes. probably a lot of us don't do. Yeah. So every what do you think? Every six months or so? Every six months, I would say maybe even just every year would be a good time to check those expiration dates on those over the counter meds, sunblocks, makeup does expire, so go ahead and. Um, check that makeup after about a year or That's so. That's a good point, too. Um, you don't want to get flare-ups on your skin, itchy eyes, that kind of thing. Right. So. Great tips. Thank you so much for joining and sharing this with us today. You're welcome.